Welcome! This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 19th of September 2011. We've continued to have some sea flares, but they're somewhat larger than the ones we've been having for the last few days. Before we take a look at the active regions to find out why this is the case, let's do our trivia question. We know that high pressure systems in the northern hemisphere circulate clockwise, and low pressure systems circulate anti clockwise, and the reverse is true in the southern hemisphere. What was the name of the French scientist who discovered this effect? As a hint, he died 168 years ago today. Once again, I'm not going to count all the little tiny sea blips, but there's been about eight substantial sea flares in the last 24 hours, including two long duration events, which usually indicate there's been a coronal mass ejection of some sort. So let's take a look at the individual active regions and see which ones have been producing this activity. Currently, we have seven numbered regions on the disk, and for once, no unnumbered regions on the disk. Six of those seven regions seem to be growing, and one is decaying, according to NOAA. I don't necessarily agree with those, but we'll see as we go along whether you agree with me or with NOAA. Let's start in the northwest with region 1289 as it goes over the west limb, and the newly numbered region 1300. Region 1289 has now reached the west limb. It did give one sea flare uh, in the last 24 hours, but it's now so close to the limb that it's very difficult to tell what's going on. The newly numbered region 1300 seems to have uh, decayed a little bit over the last 24 hours. However, we must allow for foreshortening, which would cause the region to look as though it decayed when in fact it hasn't. Next we'll look at the complex of regions in near disk center, regions 1295, 1296 and 1298. Region 1295 has produced three sea flares in the last day. However, no earth seems to claim that its area has decreased by 70%. But looking at the comparison of these two pictures, it does not seem to be the case. Region 1296 to its east also has produced three sea flares. However, it does seem to have decayed quite significantly in the last day. Region 1298 to the south has produced no activity at all and has decayed uh, down to a single spot, and I doubt that it will be visible in a day or two's time. Region 1299 is the only remaining region in the southern hemisphere and it produced a single sea flare overnight. However, its evolution has been rather peculiar. The northern part of the region seems to have developed quite significantly, whereas the southern part of the region seems to have decayed. So who knows what will become of this region in the next 24 hours. Now the region we've all been waiting for, the newly numbered region 1301 that's just coming over the northeast limb. There seems to be quite some substantial spots coming around with the region. If indeed it is one region, it may be two, maybe even three regions. We'll see when the uh, region gets more onto the disk and we can discern the magnetic field better. But anyway, this complex looks quite promising, and it has already produced two sea flares. All in all, solar activity has been relatively low, but there is still a lot of magnetic power there available to produce large flares, and there's always a chance that new regions will develop and set off a new round of activity. Now let's take a look at the evolution of these regions, first with the white light uh, sunspot movie, and then with the magnetic movie from the HMI instruments on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. If I were you, I'd concentrate on the development of region 1299 down in the south, and region 1295, and see whether you think they're growing or decaying. In the transition region and low temperature coronal movies from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, I would concentrate on the two limbs. On the west limb, you can watch regions that we know go over the limb and see how dynamic they are, and compare those with the new regions that are coming over the east limb. From the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, I managed to catch one of the sea flares on the east limb while it was in progress. You can see the bright rays coming out from the region in the picture. From the SOHO coronagraph movies, we can see that there are several coronal mass ejections during this time period, both off the east and the west limbs. The bright object that comes in from the left hand side and travels to the near the center of the image is a star. It was pointed out to me that there's a black line across the C3 image, which is probably due to the brightness of Venus. However, I suspect that this will anneal out eventually. The temperature of the solar wind has jumped up significantly in the last 24 hours, however the densities remain relatively constant at above one proton per cubic centimeter. Meanwhile, the velocity of the solar wind has steadily fallen. Now that the disturbances have passed, the high energy electron flux seems to be recovering, but we still had no proton events. The NOAA 15 data show us that the auroral zone is very quiet, and the KP index is varying between 0 and 3. 
So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the C1 level, the sunspot number remains high at 144, radio and sun intensity is at its highest I've seen so far at 150 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has dropped to 420 km per second with a density of about 2 protons per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M flares are possible, but I think X flares are becoming increasingly unlikely. The sunspot number will remain high, coronal mass ejections are likely, solar wind speed will drift lower, and the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm are unlikely. We can see from the composite coronal image that there is yet another complex of regions due to come over the northeast limb in about two days time. However in the south we probably have to wait three or four days before the next region comes over the limb. One thing to note about this picture is how continuous and relatively evenly spaced the regions are both in the north and the southern hemisphere. It looks as though the southern hemisphere is beginning to kick in at long last. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun, some of the links in the description box below might be useful to you. If you want to see earlier editions of the sun today or some of my other videos, go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you want to subscribe, you're more than welcome to do so. However, some of my subscribers have been complaining that they've not been getting notification of my new videos. Please, if that's the case with you, complain to YouTube. The more of us that complain, the quicker the problem will be solved. Anyway, the answer to the trivia question is Gaspard Gustave Coriolis. Is the name of the French mathematician that first described the Coriolis force. Anyway, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.